The views on a breath of fresh air podcast reflects the parties involved, and we encourage you all to use it as a conversational tool that will lead to personal studies of your own. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Welcome to a Breath of Fresh Air podcast. Here with your hosts, Earl Roberts and Nakaz Gay. As a young person, Christianity can be so foggy, like smoke in the mirrors and so unclear. But we're here to bring you a breath of fresh air. We need some guards, man. Aaron, where is Moses? Moses ain't coming, bro. It's been like almost a month now and we haven't seen him. Where where is the man? We need something to worship. Uh, we want a god to worship, so can you do something about that? All right, all right, all right. Listen, take off the gold earrings that your wives, your brothers, your sisters, and your daughters wearing, and come bring them to me. me. These are your gods, Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. Tomorrow, there will be a festival to the Lord. Moses, go down, because your people whom you brought out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them, and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it, and have said, These are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. I have seen these people, and they are stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone, so that my anger may burn against them, and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. Moses, I hear a sound of war in the camp. War? Joshua, that's not the sound of war. That's not the sound of victory. It's not the sound of defeat. It's the sound of singing that I hear. Are you guys serious? This is what I come back to? A calf? Dancing? Singing? What is wrong with you people? Where's Aaron at? Aaron, what did these people do to you that you led them in such a great sin? No, 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 don't be angry at me, my lord. Listen, the you know the you know these people, they they came to me and they they so prone to evil. They came to me and they said, "Make us gods who will be who will go before us." And as for the as for this guy Moses, they tell me, they say he ain't even coming back no more. So I said I said to them, "Listen, whoever has any gold jewelry, y'all take it off and bring it to me." And then I just threw it in the fire and out came this golden calf. Aaron I was born at night, but not last night. You expect me to believe this? A calf just appeared out of the furnace? Really? Okay. Whoever's for the Lord, come to me. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Each man, strap a sword to his side. Go back and forth through the camp from one end to the other, each killing his brother and his friend and his neighbor. For some time now, Moses had been on Mount Sinai, receiving the laws the children of Israel were to live and be governed by. Now, however, at the base of this mountain, the children of Israel started to fall into their old ways from Egypt. They made themselves a golden calf and they began to worship and praise it. This, needless to say, made God very angry. In this week's episode, we will explore Exodus chapters 30 to 32. Please be blessed and enjoy. Right, welcome back to another episode of A Breath of Fresh Air. Uh, 
Last week, we went through Exodus 24 through 29. It was a gauntlet. We went through a lot of the setting up of the tabernacle, all the instructions God gave to Moses on specifically how to do everything, where to put the post, where to put the curtains, where the curtains should be made out of, how much curtains, how, how long, how wide, where they should be facing the cherubims engraved in them. The, the, the ephod, the breast pieces, what they all represent. So we went through a lot last weekend. And like we say, we encourage you guys to do your own research to get a better understanding of what was said. And so this week, we're going to continue in Exodus. We are picking up from chapter 30. We're going to talk a little bit more about the finishing parts of the tabernacle setup and what, they've been, and what was needed. And then we're also going to think, get into Moses coming down off of the mountain in uh, Exodus 32. And that's going to be an interesting story in itself. So uh, let's just get into it. So Exodus 30 verse 1, make an altar of acacia wood of burning and for burning incense. It is to be square, a cubit long and a cubit wide and two cubits high. It's horns of one piece with it. Overlay the top and all the sides and all the horns with pure gold and make a gold molding around it. I just want to point out exactly how much gold they had <laughs> to take out of Egypt. Bro, yeah. Because last week, we showed how the lamp stand alone was 75 pounds of pure gold. Mm -hmm. So let's just, like, you see all this stuff out here, make this out of gold. They are gold, or make sure the wood is covered with gold. This lamp stand, pure gold. Like, they did not run out of gold. They had a lot of gold. They did not run out of gold, definitely. All right, so in, in uh, verse 4, make two gold rings for the altar below the molding, two on each of the opposite sides to hold the poles used to carry it. Make the poles of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Put the altar in front of the curtain that shields the ark of the covenant of law before the atonement cover that is over the tablets of the covenant of law where I will meet with you. Just for visual purposes, this uh, altar of incense was right, in, right before the curtain to go into the most the holy of holies mm. uh Aaron must burn fragrant incense on the altar every morning when he stands to the lamps he must burn incense again when he lights up the lamps at the twilight so incense will burn reg regularly before the lord for generations to come do not offer on this altar any other incense or any other burnt offering or grain offering do not pour a drink offering onto it once a year Aaron shall make an atonement on its horns this annual atonement must be made with the blood of the atoning sin offering for the generations to come. It must be holy to the Lord. So we're seeing the altar of incense is different from the altar of burnt offering. Mm -hmm. God's saying, this altar is just for burning incense. Don't bring no animal and say you're sacrificing on this altar. This altar is specifically for incense. Yep. So he's making sure they have a clear distinction between the two altars. Don't just say you can do anything with this particular altar. No. All your sacrifices should be done on the altar of burnt offering. Hence the name, altar of burnt offering, <laughs> altar of incense. incense yep. And we see this one's much smaller. Uh, so now we see the atonement of money in uh, Exodus 30, verse 11. Then the Lord said to Moses, When you take a census of the Israelite to count them, each one must pay the Lord a ransom for his life at the time he is counted. Then no plague will come on them when you number them. Each one who crosses over to those already counted is to give half a shekel according to the sanctuary. Pardon me. According to the sanctuary shekel, which weighs 20 geras. This half shekel is an offering to the Lord. All who cross over those 20 years old or more are to give an offering to the Lord. The rich are not to give more than half a shekel and the poor are not to give less. When you make the offering to the Lord to atone for your lives, receive the atonement money from the Israelites and use it for a service of the tent of meeting. It will be a memorial for the Israelites before the Lord, making atonement before your lives. That's interesting. He's saying, mm -hmm. guess what? If you're rich, no, I don't need no more from you. If you're poor, you still going to have to give this. So it's half a shekel for everybody. Mm -hmm. Rich, poor, the same. Y'all have to give this half a shekel. No exceptions. <laughs> ain't no more, ain't no less. Uh, the basin for washing, When the, then the Lord said to Moses, oh, picking up and hold on, bro. go for it. How do you think people would have been rich, bro? Is that, is that like to say like, for future generations, because they were all former slaves and they all spoiled. So, you know. I think some people sound up well, well off than others, bro. I mean, because yeah. just like how we were saying, too, how Aaron, Aaron could have yeah. just been leaving, like, <laughs> clearly Aaron had more affordability or more privilege than some of the other time. people. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean. It's I just, one slave with a lot of free time on his hands. I mean, and 
not to bring up our slavery, like modern slavery, but the modern slavery we think about too, there were still some slaves who had more privileges than oh, others. For sure, for Depends sure. on if you was in the field or the house. Depends on if you have like a, a, a trade skill. And, exactly. Yeah, yeah, so like it might have been the same thing there. You, and How much this, value are you bringing to the society that you're held captive in? And then at the same time, even if like economically everyone was on the same like pace, if we trying to establish like a society or a, a nation of people... And God has literally given you these rules that should never end. You know, it don't matter if we all have one economic place right now, because later on we're gonna have people who are more wealthy than others as we become. And then even even too, like we said, like talked about I think two episodes ago when we talked about like the the year of jubilee. Mm-hmm. Some people just aren't good stewards of their money. Mm-hmm. So if you're not a good steward of your money, you might be held debt into someone else, and so now you a servant for this guy for the next six years, however long until the year Jubilee. So you in a good store of your money, your money going to end up in the hands of those who are more responsible. So that's mm-hmm. the so next thing. More people could be more wealthy and mm-hmm. you know, some people could be less. And yeah. So yeah, that's just interesting. I just wanted to add some, some type of like comment there. Because <laughs> I appreciate just it. Straightforward. You know what I mean? I appreciate <laughs> it. X, this part of X, this ain't too. No, it ain't too narrative based, bro. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. It's just. Um, but we're going to be this for a minute. Hey, because after X, we got Leviticus. Leviticus, bro. <laughs> that's going to be interesting. We got to find a way to summarize some of these things, though. Bro. Yeah, Leviticus, we're going to have to do like a <laughs> two part overview. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway. To be continued. Yeah, yeah. You guys will see what we come up with when we, when we get to Leviticus. Cross that bridge. Um, in verse 17, then the Lord said to Moses, make a bronze basin. Oh, we got bronze, a different, mm-hmm. a different metal. Switch it up a little bit. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm washing the gold now, bro. What you mean? I'm going to be walking on shoots of gold in heaven. Yeah, but see, this, this, the Israel like country. You see what I said? <laughs> our gold set up for our altars in XYZ. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> Make a bronze basin with a bronze stand for washing. Place it between the tent of meeting and the and the altar, and put water in it. Aaron and his sons are to wash their hands and feet with water from it. Whenever they enter the tent of meeting, they shall wash their they shall wash with water so that they will not die. Also, when they approach the altar to minister by presenting a food offering to the Lord, they shall wash their hands and feet so that they will not die. This is be a lasting ordinance for Aaron and his descendants for generations to come. In verse 22, the Lord said to Moses, take the following fine spices, 500 shekels of liquid myrrh, half as much as that, I guess that would be around 250 shekels of fragrant cinnamon, 250 shekels of fragrant calamus, 500 shekels of cassia, and according to the sanctuary, shekel of hen of olive oil. Make these into a sacred anointing oil, a fragrant blend the work of a perfumer. It will be the sacred anointing oil. Then use it to anoint the tent of meaning, the Ark of the Covenant, the table and all of its articles, the lampstand and all of its accessories, and the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering, and all the utensils, the basin and the stand. You shall consecrate them so they will be most holy, and who whatever touches them will be holy. Anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them so that they may serve me as priests. Say to the Israelites, this is to be my sacred anointing oil for generations to come. Do not pour it on anyone else's body and do not make any other oil using the same formula. It is a sacred, it is sacred and you are to consider it sacred. Whoever makes perfume like it and puts it on any other than a priest must be cut off from their people. This, I personally think this might have smelled super good. <laughs> yeah. I mean, because like God saying, like, I'm, and I even forgot to, even forgot to be like, yo, don't even make this again. Like, mm-hmm. when y'all make this, y'all making this for this one purpose, and a perfumer making this too. Yeah, and then at the same time, it's like we see God put emphasis on like not making things sacrilegious or making things like, um, devalued. You know, mm-hmm. if we set this aside for this thing. I can't just be going around doing this just regular. Because that thing is be special no more. It's losing, it's losing its purpose. Exactly. Because I was just thinking, I was reading, I was like, huh. Before I even got to that second part, I was like, huh. This would be cool to like make this and see how this smell. And God said, yeah, don't make this. And I'm like, dang. <laughs> he was already way ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, it could be someone like you yeah. coming back and saying, yeah, we can make this. Yeah, yeah. Hey. What's that, what's that scent? Oh, that's, you know, that's the anointing scent. That's that, that's that little anointing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> You smell anointed. I, I smell the um, anointing among, <laughs> among us. Yeah. Oh, my. But it's still interesting, too. God say, yeah, whoever does this, 
will be cut off from their people. Hmm. And then the Lord said in verse 34, said to Moses, take fragrant spices, gum resin. Onicha. Onicha and galbanum yeah. and pure frankincense, all in equal amount amounts. And make a fragrant blend of incense to the work of a perfumer. It is to be salted and pure and sacred. Grind some of it into a powder and place it in front of the Ark of Covenant of Law in the tent of meeting, where I will meet with you. It shall be most holy to you. Do not make any incense with this formula for yourselves. Consider it holy to the Lord. Whoever makes incense like it to enjoy its fragrance must be cut off from their own people. Mm-hmm. Another thing I think might have smelled really good too. Mm-hmm. You see, it still was like a perfumer or something. Say that again? And you say your sister like did stuff like this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. My sister <laughs> deal with like a lot of chemicals and just stuff like that, testing it. And, and so like, she, she hooked us up with some really nice fragrances when I was a part of our bridal party. She says, you know, you know. She makes, just, like, this, this makes them anointed. Yeah, yeah. This should speak to her a little more than it speaks to other people. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, yeah, that, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty, pretty dope, though. And, you know, funny, funny because, like, the Lord gives you specific instructions on how to anoint and how to set the, the ambience or, or the uh-huh. scent. God gave them that, that 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 special recipe twice. Exactly. Hey, you only got to come up with this. No, this is what I want. This is what I want to smell. I want this pleasing aroma to the Lord. And I put this mixture together. So you know. So don't think you could go and monetize this or you could just be wearing this at leisure. No, this this for me. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, And don't forget it either. <laughs> you know? Because, you know, when you when you see someone do a nice, make a, I have a nice idea, like, Sometimes you don't want to reinvent the wheel. Like, oh, I mean, mm-hmm. we already have a nice scent. We already know it's proven. It's tested. Let's use it. But he's like, Mm-mm. no, like, <laughs> it's going to be consequences if you try to use this just for regular use. And so, yeah. Cool. So chapter 31. Then the Lord said to Moses, see, I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the Holy Spirit, with the Spirit of God, with wisdom with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills, to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of craft. Moreover, I have anointed Oholiab, son of Ahisamach, of the tribe of Dan, to help him. Also, I have given ability to all the skilled workers to make everything I have commanded you. The tent of meeting, the Ark of the Covenant with the atonement cover on it, and all the other furnishings of the tent, the table and its articles, the pure gold lampstand and all its accessories, the altar of incense, the altar of burnt offering, and all its utensils, the basin with with its stand the base the basin the basin with its stand, and also <clears throat> the woven garments, both the sacred garments for Aaron the priests and the and the garments for his sons when they serve as priests and the anointing oil and fragrant incense for the holy place they are to make them just as i commanded you i like how god already had the people chosen out saying moses you don't have to look too far for who could do this you don't gotta i'm gonna take some distress off you automatically go down to the son of uri the son of her hmm. from the tribe of judah he, he ready. I, he, he good I got at this him. already. He, he already got the Holy Spirit. And he's, he, I bless him with art and design. And then I also like how God was like, you know what? All the other skilled workers, everything I've commanded you, like they, they, they got this. So like, this reminds me like just working for the Lord. See, but this, it's a pain to, like even you and I, but when we try to find an illustrator or animator or cover artist, and, like bro, it's a pain trying to find people to do that, bro. Like, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So... So God already is like, all right, I already given you all of this instruction. It's a lot. Of, it's a lot to follow. It's a lot of detail. You don't have to worry about even finding the labor or the talent to, to accomplish these things. I got. They already. I already teach them how to do this from time. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? They Depend already have them the for skills. Such a time as this, exactly. And so then, on, in verse twelve, the Lord said to Moses, "Say to the Israelites, you must observe my Sabbaths. This will be a sign between me and you." For the generations to come, so you may know that I am the Lord who makes you holy. Observe the Sabbath, because it is holy to you. Anyone who desecrates it, to be put to death. Those who do any work on that day must be cut off from their people. For six days, work is to be 
for six days work is to be done, but the seventh day is a day of, of Sabbath rest. Holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day is to be put to death. The Israelites are to observe the Sabbath, celebrating it, celebrating it for generations, for the generations to come as a lasting covenant. It will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever. I don't, I don't think forever have an expiration date, you know, bro. Forever. For six days, the Lord made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and, and was refreshed. When the Lord finished speaking to Moses on Mount Sinai, he gave him the two tablets of the law, the tablets of stone, inscribed by the finger of God. All right. So, so the back track. Mm-hmm. Moses first went up. God told him the Ten Commandments. Mm-hmm. Moses came down, relayed this to everybody. And what they say? We will observe. We mm-hmm. will listen. And you pointed out, they didn't have any pushback to that. They was like, all right, yeah, yeah, we could, we could observe. We could listen. And so now, this is just painting the picture. We too close to spoil it. You see mm-hmm. what they say? Yeah. So, so we just painted the picture. So now here, Moses went back up. And I think earlier they said he was there for 40 days and 40 nights. And during this time, if that's the same time frame, right? God told him about the tabernacle and all these other things that we just explained to you. And then verse 31 ends with saying... Chapter. Chapter 31. Yeah. I always just mix them up. Me too. 31 verse 18 says that he gave Moses the two tablets of the covenant, the tablets of stone inscribed by the finger of God. So here this is literally handwritten. In the literal sense, this was handwritten. Handwritten, probably <laughs> in Hebrew. Right. Into the stone. <clears throat> And so, moving over to chapter 32, this is probably the most notable thing about the Israelites in Egypt. Well, after Egypt. I mean, I mean in, in, in the wilderness, I'm sorry. Yeah. The, the Israelites in the wilderness. The probably most notable story. Because this one thing everybody know, for mm-hmm. real. You see what I'm saying? Like, a lot of people don't know about what happened after this or before this. Like, their time in the wilderness, people just know they was roaming around. This happened. Yeah, it's, it's like usually like after you think about the Ten Commandments, think of this right afterwards. It's like they skip. You go from Exodus 20 to Exodus 32. Bro, it's like you go from like Exodus 19 or whatever mm-hmm. had the, the plagues mm-hmm. straight to Exodus 30. Oh, straight to Exodus 20. Oh, wait. 19 was the plagues? Uh, no, it, no, 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 no. Was that, like was way the, before the, that was way before the plagues. Yeah. My bar. So, so let's say that's like chapter 10. Or yeah, the, the, the plagues and then Exodus 14 14 So you go from like 14 I don't know why I say 19 to 20 but anyway, <laughs> You go from job to 14 Right Straight to the 10 commandments 20 <laughs> Straight Yeah which is 20 Straight to 32 mm-hmm. And bro Even when we was reading Exodus Just now Just like earlier The study It was like Wait wait wait, wait. They introduced us to To um To the 10 commandments but then we got so, so much more before he come down from this mount. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't remember, I don't remember all of this even being in between. Man. You know what I mean? It's so funny because like the stories you think are in Exodus, they're like in numbers. That's what I'm saying, but when we learn about, when we learn about, um, um, what's the name, Aaron's sons, they just mentioned Aaron's sons a few times. Mm-hmm. And it's like, this wasn't even the story I knew about his sons. Exactly. <laughs> so, so now yeah. we see in uh, chapter 32 of Exodus. When the people saw Moses was so long and coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow, Moses, who brought us out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. on. I mean, hey, it's been just the second episode. We didn't really get to talk for real. Exactly. So so I just ready to talk. We we ready. (laughs) So now let's see, think about this. So now, even to go back, backtrack a little bit more. We know when Moses came back down, he brought Aaron up and some of the elders and then him and Joshua went up further. Mm-hmm. So now, it's been over a month. I mean, 40 days and even our, our time right now, the longest month we have is like, what, 31 days? So 31 days plus an extra nine. So now they say Moses has been gone for so long. They say, Aaron, who is a priest, supposed to be a priest, who should know better, who was technically Aaron, Moses' right-hand man and mm-hmm. Moses' brother, who God sent to Moses to... Give Moses the extra confidence to go approach Pharaoh. Yep. I remember even at the beginning of the plagues, it was Aaron who was doing most who's of the communi- ta- who's talking. Who was doing most of the communication. Aaron was the talker. Exactly. So Aaron knows better. I just want to paint that picture. You had something to say before I... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but I, I can say something now, though. Uh-huh. My thing is, bro, the Israelites, right? No, what I wanted to say was, they literally said, come make us gods. Mm-hmm. That came out of their mouth, mm-hmm. right? But before that... I was saying that, remember, 
it was only like um, in two months time they had already complained and was trying to kill Moses mm-hmm. you understand what I'm saying so I don't think they even been in the wilderness for six months you understand so probably they only been around for like four months maybe five months but this would have been the longest time they as free as a free nation they spent away from their leader so now it's like out of sight out of mind this one ain't coming back no more granted bro they ain't even been a year in the wilderness yet mm-hmm. but now oh I, I remember what I wanted to say now they come to Aaron and say, come make us gods who will go before us, right? We don't know. Who. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of, out of, out of Egypt. Yeah, like they try to disregard Moses. But my, yeah, this fellow. I was going to say, but think about it too. You can look up at the mountain and still see God's presence there. Yeah, the fire is, the fire is there, bro. You can see clouds and everything. You know what so I'm saying? So I'm like, how y'all have this emboldened to be like, <laughs> God's presence hasn't left the mountaintop. So why y'all think it's okay? You think Moses was sleeping on top of that mountain? I was thinking he would have to sleep. Cause I was saying I was just I was no on the last last our last episode when we was going through all of this I was like yo I was just trying to think of how he, just, he was there for forty days bro like how would the days go y'all talk y'all reason and then you eat sleep wait what you up. eating you would be fasting uh, we don't know bro you know what I mean we don't sorry it's I, a random I just, thought I was, just like, I was like forty days up in the mountain like by yourself and God yes God will sustain you I, I agree. He could have been eating good. You see what I'm saying? Like, he could have been eating pretty good if y'all ask me. But um, yeah, so I mean, they probably had their days planned out. You know, he write down, you know, God, just like class and then they reason. And you know, and, like this is super interesting. It's like talking to God. like Talking like, to God one-on-one. Uh, imagine, imagine, imagine everybody, right? Because to, to some people, they might be sitting there like, man, I'm going to get boring X, Y, Z. But imagine your favorite celebrity, the person that you admire the most, sitting down and chilling with you. You understand what they're saying? You all get the reason, bro. You, you, the time would fly. You know what I mean? Like, and I mean, I, you know, just think about it. You've created the universe right here with you communicating. like, And you and he trying to set you all uh, how this nation that you just brought out of Egypt is going to run. Like, you have unlimited more questions. Exactly. And um, um, what I was going to say was, when the Israelites come there and they say, come make us gods, bro. This ain't no jokey thing right now, bro. These the people who's about to kill Moses. And Aaron don't even have Moses on his side now. Aaron take the smoke with Moses the whole time, but it was with Moses. And Moses ended up saying, bro, I trying to let y'all understand, bro. I want to talk to God, but guess what? Y'all ain't complaining against me, you know. Y'all are complaining against God. Let's please be mindful of that. Mm-hmm. But this Aaron by himself now. Aaron, Aaron was this, Aaron, God gave Moses the message to give to Aaron. Aaron was too far removed from God to even have these thoughts as one to say. No, I ain't doing this X, Y, Z because these people are not, they're not, they're not above killing you, bro, for not getting their way. That's, that's the only thing I want to, want to paint the picture. It's only been 40 days. You understand what I'm saying? They just said 40 days ago, bro, they just said that they were going to keep the commandments. The first commandment said, have no other gods, right? All right, cool. In their mind, they don't feel, they don't feel like this is having a God. They say, make a God before us. They feel like this is an intercessor, right? But um, part two say, um, 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 the second commandment say, don't make any gods from the heavens or, or you know, you understand what I'm saying? So basically y'all making a God f- to, re- to represent the most high God is breaking the second commandment. Just laying that out there. Mm-hmm. So in verse two, Aaron answered them, take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. Now, it's been extremely difficult for me to keep score of these things, bro. I had it as one four, one against, and two ties, right? Mm-hmm. This right here, I want to say this a four, bro. Not because of the way they use it, but because they had it on. You understand what I'm saying? And in the presence of Moses, the presence of God, and God never stopped and say, hey, y'all, y'all ain't supposed to be wearing these, this jewelry. I feel like that's a no-brainer because God literally tell them all these stuff that y'all was doing that y'all ain't supposed to be doing, but jewelry never came up. Mm-hmm. And it literally says the earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing, you know? And it ain't even like, because they had to take the, of course, the Egyptians wear jewelry, Mm -hmm. and they took it from them. You know what I'm saying? So it ain't like saying the jewelry that they had that they got from the Egyptians, but that they're actually wearing. And then we see where um, for for the servants would have gotten piercings too. You understand what I'm saying? So I can just say it's 2-1-1. And, you know... Probably we ain't know where how far this can go. Or where this can go but <laughs> just saying that's and, and and jewelry beside the point because we can see where jewelry was used for the wrong thing and it's the second time. Mm-hmm. The first time when 
the first time when um and you know what just thinking about it this could be another tie bro because like the I say this it's it's a it's a four because they was wearing jewelry and God didn't tell him to take it off. But now we can see, see him jewelry getting turned into make a golden calf. Exactly, we can see how spoiler the, alert. But right, you know we're gonna see them two we verses. Can see, we can see how the jewelry was used for idols, and that's the same thing. When our first one, our first point against jewelry, it was it was in Genesis when Jacob went to his his, his family when they were about to run after Levi and Simeon just killed the town, and they say, all right, we about to go to this alt, we about to go to this mount, we got we about to make an altar, take off all your jewelries, remove take off. All your jewelry, remove your idols. You understand what I'm saying? And so, so yeah. But I, I can get this one a point. You know what I mean? Next time, if it's on the fence, I, I can give it on, on the other side. Yeah, it's yeah. just gotta be fair, you know. So, um, verse three. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. This must have been a lot of earrings, but then it's you know it's like a million people. He he um he took what they handed him and made it into an idol cast in the shape of a calf. Fashioning it with a tool. Then said, then they said, these are, then they said, these are your gods, Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. Mm. So, I don't know, bro. This is like, this is crazy, bro. This is like direct defiance of what God just said. And this just go to show why God was talking about idols so much, bro. Bro, it, in Egypt, God just was saying, oh, bro, it's two days God reiterated a lot, bro. Do not worship idols. Do not make idols. You understand? Mm-hmm. Do not try to, do not use these um, materials to make idols. Don't make idols out of out of me. Period. Do not make idols, right? And then he, want, he also wanted to bring home that I am the God that brought you out of the land of Egypt. You know what I'm saying? Follow me. Listen to me. I'm going to protect you against these things if you, if you, do, if you don't do these things. I'm going to make you a great nation of kings in X, Y, Z if you do, if you do these things. Like God basically trying to make, trying to help them to show you all how worthwhile it would be to, to, to serve listen to me. me. To yep. serve me, you know? And w- w- reading it, you wouldn't get it. When we do our episode the other day, a um, couple of weeks back on the place when we were saying God was in the wreck, it was, uh, was specifically targeting and exposing the, the Egyptian idols, mm-hmm. it seemed like a reach. Until you go on more and see God talking about idols, and you can be like, why God so fixated on idols, right? But it ain't God who fixated on idols. You leave these people for 40 days, and they like, oh, they, they relapse. We need to get back to our idol ways, bro. Like, they mm-hmm. itching for idol. Like, they itching for a leader. And it also shows, too, like how human beings have that void, a God-sized void that they need to fill at some point in time. Some people run away from it, but it's always that void they got to fill. And they're like, oh, well, we don't have our God. Hmm. We, we don't have Moses. Okay, what was working for us before? <laughs> Idols. But this time, we could freak it. We could remix it. We could, we could do an idol for God. And this, bro, you see what they say? These are your gods, plural, Israel. These are your gods, Israel. Who brought you out of Egypt? Mm-hmm. God literally was saying the whole time, do not be mistaken. Every time you hear my voice, remember, I am the same God of your fathers, um, Abraham, mm-hmm. Isaac, and Jacob. But also, I am the God that brought you out of Egypt. I'm making it personal to y'all. Mm-hmm. And when they turn around and say, these are your gods who brought you out of Egypt. Bro, this is like, to me, Moses... Moses end up taking a big L because of his anger. We know Moses had anger issues. But we see how far he's come. He's like, this is a patient, patient man. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, boy. You see, Moses Moses killed someone before how angry he get, right? Mm-hmm. We see how when they when they complain to Moses and they tell him Moses they about to kill him, he ain't start, he ain't start getting mad, freaking out. He said, y'all, relax, bro, yo, y'all mad at God, you know, y'all mm-hmm. ain't mad at me. The same my thing. You understand what I'm saying? And y'all don't have no right to be mad at God, but y'all... But y'all still showing these mad. And he go on to God and he say, God, they trying to kill me. You mm-hmm. understand? But he ain't get mad, bro. There's so much things already where I would have been mad. I, bro, eyes get mad over simple things. <laughs> eyes, my nerves just get on me over simple things, bro. Mm-hmm. And I just be praying, God, because I know one day I can have children. And I want to be, I want to have the type of transformation that Moses had, bro. Just be a patient person by the time when it's time to lead a family. Mm-hmm. You understand? And so... <clears throat> With this same last line, these are your gods who brought you out of Egypt, bro. That's a slap in the face. How you think God feel? Like me, bro, like, 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 like you do all the work, right? And you see someone else get credit. And you're just like, wow. But like me, as a human, I know that I can't do nothing unless God enable me to do it. Exactly. Even the powers I have, even if I use these powers for, for, for evil, God has blessed me with these gifts. 
But because we have free will, we have free will to use it positively or negatively. Exactly. God bless us with a certain capacity. You will see you see people in sports days do crazy stuff. Like their balance might be crazy. They could acrobats, they could jump and fly so high. And you're just like, bro, how is this humanly possible? Like just for a second to think about, if you start by the free throw line, that's like 15 feet away from the basket, bro. Imagine jumping from there and even touching the net. I can't do that, bro. Mm -hmm. You understand? But bro, NBA players, they could do it like crazy because God bless us with the ability and the capability to, to do all of these things, right? But now we have somebody who owns all of these things. He's the reason why we have these things. He And he I put the Israelites in place to be a free nation. He heard their cry. They was crying to God, Lord, protect us, save us. All these years, y'all was enslaved. Y'all was praying to God, you know. And God finally listened to y'all. And now, he he make it a point to say, this was me and not the idols. Because I see y'all miseducated. God could have punished them from time. Because wrong mm -hmm. is wrong, you know. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, God is winking ignorance. So he know that y'all was ignorant to the fact that idols were wrong. So he took this time to rehabilitate take your minds yo look this is this is what i do to idols because i am above all the idols i embarrass them i am bowling y'all with this with these things so that the the, the neighbor communities can see hey these are the gods who don't these are the people who don't worship idols their god is right for them you understand that's mm -hmm. like when you have a big brother and you know you could get in any problem in school because you know your big brother coming to help you and save you you just feel safe and, and and you just feel you just have you just have that type of stability right God do all of this for these people, bro. And they turn around and literally thank the enemy for what God did. The thing that God detests. Bro, imagine, bro. Imagine if you, imagine if you dating somebody, right? And and they like, and you have like a rival or enemy and someone you just really don't like, bro. You, they just do bad stuff. You just don't like it. It is flex, bro. And your girlfriend always bragging with them. You understand what I'm saying? You buy her, you buy her flowers, and she go and thank her, her, her ex boyfriend. That's a problem. Th think about that, bro. Like that's so wild to think, bro. Like I remember, I remember I was on Twitter one time, right? This girl had gotten proposed to, bro. Mm -hmm. So a man, a man who she was dating, said that I want to be with you for the rest of my life. When she posted on social media, she did not say thank you, I love you, X Y Z. You know, she said, I know my ex is gonna be mad. They, they passed up on me. And the, the, the common consensus was that, yo, you worrying about your ex when this man worrying about you. Mm -hmm. Like, think about where your mindset is. Mm -hmm. And everybody, guys, ladies, everybody was like, yo, that's, that's bad. They was telling the guy, like, you need to reconsider if you, if you think this woman is ready for marriage right now because yeah. it's just her mindset. And that's, and that's how I feel like they are right now. They still on their ex, bro. They stuck on their ex, bro. Their ex is idols. But they ain't, they can't get over their ex. So, so we ain't hear from God in 41 days because the person who intercedes on our behalf and speaks through God has been gone for 40 days. So we need an intercessor. And the only intercessor is the things that God just told us not to not to use as an intercessor or period. I mean, Aaron should have been strong in this sense too, though, because like Aaron, like, like I said before, Aaron just knew better. Like he was just weak. He gave to the pressure. He didn't have that fortitude that he should have had. To say no to these people. I mean, because I was just out of say, Coley, y'all just say a couple days ago that y'all would have keep all the law, all God's laws. Hmm. The first three deal with this very thing y'all talking about right now. Yeah. We ain't doing it. Yeah, straight up. The first three, bro. Like, and, and, and you wonder why these was the first three. <laughs> like the first three, the first three things y'all say y'all agree to. Don't, I don't want y'all to miss this. In one voice, the <laughs> Bible says, in one voice, all of Israel said, we will do that. We will do what the Lord commands. Bro, when I put them together our album, the song that I want people to hear the most is really the, is usually the second song. You understand what they're saying? Because I know I only got the first song should be the, the attention grabber. The song that you care about the most that you feel like have the the most to offer mm -hmm. should be your second, if not third song. Because you know, if you have your song as number seven and that's your favorite song, they people people more than likely ain't making it down there. Mm -hmm. When we look at the Ten Commandments, the second commandment was saying, "Don't make idols." Mm -hmm. The first one could have been like an introductory, don't have no other God before you. All right, we got you, God. You know, mm -hmm. we riding with you. The second one, we getting down to the nitty and gritty now. You just the honeymoon stage over now. Mm -hmm. I already tell you, no, no other gods. That's, that's number one. You shouldn't forget that. That, mm -hmm. that applies always. But now, let's get down to these idols. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they done fail, bro. But the thing about Aaron, right? Aaron was not firm. Definitely he was not, not being a good leader under any circumstances right nope. now. You understand? He was being a people pleaser. 
But I think Aaron was scared, bro. Yeah, he was scared, but still. Right. I think he literally was like, I don't want to die. And if I speak my mind and stand up on what is right and what I believe in, I want to die. And he was scared. But it just shows how weak his faith is, too. That's true. That's true. Because even if you're scared and you believe God can still got you, then just now, gotta accept it. Think about think about um think about Joseph. You don't think Joseph thought he was gonna die when when he when he tell when he when part of a wife deny him and he was still pleading his innocence. Mm-hmm. There was plenty of times, bro. Plenty of times, bro. Even when Joseph was following his father's instructions to look after his brothers, he followed out to a fault because he was about to die because of these things, bro. Just because you in the face of adversity, don't mean you should compromise your morals. Exactly. Because that, because then truly, truly, you are saying greater is he that is around me and ready to kill me than he that is my protector and my God. Mm-hmm. That's essentially what you say without saying. You know what I mean? And so, like, but that's really, that's really all it was for, for Aaron. Like, Aaron was like, these people was ready to kill Moses. I ain't even Moses. You understand what I saying? What you think they could do to me? I know if but I know if Aaron was a behemoth and if he could have reason for real, dog. Like if he could have hear him talking, he'd be like, bro, oh no, I'm bro. He was going all this time, bro. I tried telling him what's going on, I don't know. We can see what Aaron's saying. Right, right. I tried telling him what's going on, bro, but they was trying to kill you, bro. What you think they could do to me? Aaron, see what I said? My goodness. Oh my anyway, let's get that. <laughs> so right, uh, in verse five, when Aaron saw this, he built an altar in the front of the calf and announced, tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. See, and that's where you going too far, bro. Mm-hmm. It's one thing to be, it's one thing to be a people pleaser, bro, but you literally indulging, bro. <laughs> you going above and beyond now. And that's the thing, bro, because I feel like Aaron is more at fault in enabling them than these people, bro, because obviously in their mind, they ain't, they ain't following God for real, bro. They don't have that love in that relationship, bro. You know better, dog. You know, and you going above and beyond. Bro, it's one thing to say, all right, I got, I can listen to y'all so I don't die, bro. But your boy going forward and he taking a step further. All right, we could build altars in front of this idol and we join a party, but we can say it for God. From Cain and Abel time, we understand where God say, bro, if I tell you do this thing, don't do the next thing and say it for me. I don't, I ain't accepting that offering. Mm-hmm. From Cain and Abel time, bro. Hmm. And then uh, in verse six. So the next day, the people rose and early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowships and offerings. Afterwards, they sat down to eat and drink and got up and indulged in revelry. So they was having a good old time yeah, after they, this. They went they back to the event out of it. Huh? They make an event out of it. Yeah, they went back to the Egyptian ways. Mm-hmm. Then the Lord said to Moses, go down because the people whom you brought out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them, and I have made and have made themselves an idol, cast in the shape of a calf. They bowed down to it and sacrificed to it, and have said, "These are your gods, Israel, who we brought you out of Egypt." Mm. I have seen they, these people. Bro, they, they, these gods, what you just make? Mm-hmm. That's who brought y'all out of Egypt. That's what they were saying. That they want out, bro. My bar, my bar. Are we seeing God and say, Moses, Moses, go down? <sighs> go downstairs, bro. Go on downstairs and deal with these people. But this wasn't a jokey. Go downstairs, you know. Mm-hmm. This was a bro. Go downstairs. And at least get a word in before, before it get real. And we see God say, I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses. They are stiff neck people. Now leave me alone that, I may, that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you a great nation. Hmm. But then Moses saw the favor of the Lord. And he said, Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and, and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say... It was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth. Mm. Turn your anger, turn your fierce anger, turn from your fierce anger, relent, and do not bring disasters of, on your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in 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 the sky, and I will give your descendants this land. I, I promised them, and it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disasters he threatened. So you see Moses, Moses end up reasoning with God, bro. <laughs> On behalf of the people who um, want to kill him. And, but, and, and think about this now. Think about this, bro. These people, right, you, they wanted to kill you, right? But God's saying now, hold oh on. I'm about to kill them now, Moses. But it ain't going to be the end, you know. Mm-hmm. I can make a great nation through uh, you. Out of you. Out of you. Mm-hmm. That's a... That's a it would have been Abraham, Isaac, Israel, and Moses. It would have been Moses at this point. It would have only been was, Moses would have been the new Abraham, but they, Moses was still descend from all three of them. So I'd been like, you know, yeah, yeah. But at the same time, they had other descendants, right? Uh-huh. And they, like this is what I said, Abraham, 
like ten children or like mm-hmm. eight eight kids, eight sons or ten or something like that, right? Mm-hmm. Only one of them it was only the line of Isaac without Moses. You see what I saying? Everything else you done would have been wiped away, wiped away. <laughs> Everything else everybody else done would have been wiped away. Only the stuff that come from Moses, only the people who come from Moses would have had the relevance, mm-hmm. right? That's a Godfather offer, bro. It got to show like if Moses had any type of pride in being like the king or the ruler. Or to be esteemed the way Abraham was ruled, mm-hmm. he could have bite that off, and it wasn't even him been biting. You know, God was telling him, God didn't ask him how you feel about this. He was like, "Yo, all right, come, come down from this mountain, and then let me deal with them, and then I can make my nation out of you." I think it was God still t- testing Moses' heart as well, too. See, but at the yeah, right, because at the same time, Moses was like, "Hey, God," because it ain't like God didn't want to kill him now. You understand? Because what they did was, unpo- bro, he just was saying what was gonna happen if you worship idols. And- what? And mm-hmm. they just do it. You understand what they say now? And we can get to that later. We can get to that in, in, in a few minutes too. That would be an interesting to just refer to future thinking because I'm like, so there would have been no David. There would have been, because the tribe of Judah would have get wiped out. Yeah, that's true. So that would have been interesting for promise keeping how God would have pulled that off. Mm-hmm. And see, the thing with Moses, Moses showed his selflessness. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like he definitely cared about his people, you know? And then another another interesting thing I wanted to point out, he was like, think about the Egyptians too, because we make a name for ourselves. You set you set us apart. But at the same time, the fact that they treating them this they, the fact that they acting this way, they put us in in a situation to be made a mockery of mm-hmm. by the Egyptians. Because you can't God don't God shouldn't just spare them because the enemies could look and laugh. Because if you're doing wrong by God, by his rules, wrong is wrong. Like God pride ain't getting away from him, disciplining us and, and X, Y, Z, you know? But Moses is saying at the same time, like, we still want to be a representation to the nations around us, you know? But now, if we if they just turn around to the idols and worshiping and then just get wiped out X, Y, Z, everyone could laugh because they already was looking for a flaw or looking for something to laugh at God anyway, you know? So it was like, all right, let's, 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 Let's maneuver through this, you know, and also just give them forgiveness too. Yeah. So um, then we see in verse 15, Moses turned down, turned and went down the mountain with the two tablets of the covenant and of law in his hands. They were inscribed on both sides, front and back. The tablets were the work of God. And that's the next thing too. You only see the front side when people like write them out. You you just forget they back and front. Yeah. I, I, I totally forgot that. The tablets were the work of God. The writing was the writing of God engraving the tablets. Dang, God's own handwriting. I thought sure it was perfect too. Hmm. When Joshua heard the noise of the people shouting, he said, Moses, there is a sound of war in the camp. Oh, Joshua, if only Joshua, you know. Joshua thought they was fighting. As an excellent thing, because we see even not even Joshua was in the camp at all. So nope. was, they were still up in the mountain. Mm-hmm. Moses replied, it is not the sound of victory. It is the sound of defeat. It is the sound of singing that I hear. Moses approached the camp and saw the calf and the dancing. His anger burned and he threw the tablets out of his hands, breaking them into pieces at the foot of the mountain. And he took the calf the people had made and burned it in the fire. And then he grounded it into powder and scattered it on the water and made the Israelites drink it. Mm -hmm. He said to Aaron, what did these people do to you (laughs) that you led them into such a great sin? Aaron said, do not be angry. Moses saying, but they had to talk to you or something, man, to make you give it up like that. Just think about it. Imagine how disappointed Moses was. Of course, bro. Bro, this is the thing. It's like, it's like, it's like when your teeth, it's like when your parent have to come off their job because you in the principal office. They don't be happy about that. You understand what I'm saying? I was in the middle of, I was in the middle of whatever I was doing and you embarrassing me. Mm-hmm. That's number one. God already upset. So, you know, Moses upset that my people upset God. Mm-hmm. Y'all embarrassing me. Mm-hmm. You understand? And then... And see all the lightning in this. Exactly. So like coming off of the mountain. It ain't even like no small party. I get headed from the top of the mountain. You got Joshua here thinking someone attacking the camp because you know Joshua ready with the smoke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and Moses yeah, is time, ready. It's time for war. Moses is <laughs> like, no. That ain't the song of victory. That's the song of defeat. So exactly. you're just even burning them up and then like y'all haven't... I can hear y'all from the mountain partying, drinking, 
To a cough? Mm-hmm. No, man. Joshua was ready to fight. Joshua was like, all right. Joshua was getting anxious. Like, hold on, Moses. You got to come now, now. You got to you gotta make go. sure things are staying. We're starting to ride. Hey, bring, bring some hearts up in there, Moses. Yeah, yeah. Get the stuff. You get the stuff. But Moses was like, no, bro. This ain't even no jokey wipe. And, and the thing about it, too, though, bro, when you disconnected from society, bro, it is be so interesting to see how people is maneuver and X, Y, Z. Like, if some things, like when I used to hang around with my friends from high school, mm-hmm. there's some things we used to do. I go to college. I move, I grew, you understand? I come back to some people who was in the same space. Mm-hmm. And like to me, it was like, man, I can't do this right no more, you know? Because I just, I grew up mature. I like, mentally I matured to the point where I just saying, just don't, I don't feel like just sitting around doing nothing and mm-hmm. X, Y, Z. Like I, like I have a different mindset. The fact that you in there every day and feeling how like tensions boiling up and their need to worship idols and X, Y, Z. You, the, the last thing you remember from them was them saying, we go do keep the commandments. Yeah, we can keep the commandments, and then the next time you see them, it's worshiping a calf, and they haven't. They say revelry, bro. That's like a, a noisy party, bro. Like that's like a big festival, you know. Good old time. And that, that could make you mad, bro. But I, I don't. I can't see how anybody wouldn't be mad uh, at, at given those circumstances. And then, and then you see Moses like Aaron. So, what extent, hmm. like? How much pressure did they apply to you to get you to do this? Exactly. Because it, 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 they just couldn't come and simply ask you to do this and you gave no, in. No. Surely not. No, you know where you recommend this. Surely not. Did they say they was going to stone you again? Did, mm-hmm. they, did, they, did they tie you up? Like, they threaten you. They torture your what family happened? or what? Moses said, Aaron's like, don't be angry. You, you know how prone these people are to evil. They said to me, make us a God who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us out of Egypt, we don't know what happened to him. So I told them, whoever has any gold, take it off. They gave it to me. <laughs> hmm. I can't believe this man said this. I can't believe he gave it They up gave me the gold and I threw it into fire and out came the scalp. <laughs> <laughs> well, bro, like, no, that's how you give it up, bro. It's like, bro, I mean, they was talking about this, this fellow Moses. You know, they, they didn't even know what's going on with you. So I, all I say was, give me all your jewelry. And then I throw it in the fire. Oh no, I, I miss and throw it in the fire. I throw it in the fire and then... And then... A cough? A cough come out the fire, bro. I, I know. And like to me... If Moses used to cuss, I can imagine what Moses really used to say. <laughs> if Moses was violent, he should have slap Aaron for that, bro. First of all... <laughs> you think I dumb, eh, but... Right. You think I'm stupid? That's number one. Number two, that was pathetic. You, you could have done better than that, bro. And then the whole... You had this whole time... To think of something. To think of... To, like how I got... How I got finesse to, to Moses, but still. I know you was probably open. I don't come back, probably. Because that's the best you got. So I, I, just, I just stopped Aaron again. But you're supposed to be a priest. Yeah. You're about to be a priest you, at this the time. Bro, think about this, bro. This whole time, he ain't even get to talk to Aaron yet. This whole time, God was saying you're about to be the high priest, bro. Mm-hmm. We could put, we could dress him a certain way so he could have the, the, the dignity and the, and, the, and the pride in doing this. You understand? And the first thing you could do when I come back down off the mountain is lie to me. And lie to me talking about you throw gold in the fire and then a calf come out. When you ever see that happen? <laughs> what God do that? You think God do that? Come <laughs> I mean, on, Aaron. My word. Come on, you better not, Aaron. Oh, we could just skip over how Moses make the people drink the calf. <laughs> drink the water. We, drink the, drink the gold. We ain't talking, we, we just read, we just read yeah, the Bible. Yeah, for true, That's the part that's missed in these, in these uh, cartoons and stuff. I, I really hate how people is painting these narratives, you know, bro, because it's always, he break the Ten Commandments and that is be it. And it's be bad on him. Yeah, it's be bad on him. You know what I mean? Like, but bro, him making them drink the water, drink the, drink the gold. That ain't, that, ain't the, that ain't the worst part yet. That ain't the worst part of that punishment yet. It gets worse, bro. It gets far worse. But then think about this, bro. Moses, Moses, Moses was in playing with y'all, bro. He know they is getting mad to the point where they're ready to kill. Mm-hmm. Right? But Moses, like, he break it up and grind it into dust or whatever. Right? In front of all of them. He know and stop him. Dude, he's greatly outnumbered. You know what had the... Who want us to stop it? Right in, but ain't nobody wanted that smoke, bro. Cause this was real. Cause y'all know how Moses used to give it up. Nah, this is he might have been a little more reformed and refined, but no. This, this angry Moses I see, now. I see that. I see that look in his eye before. <laughs> I see that look in his eye before, bro. So he grinded up in front of them. Nobody stop him. He he he, he throw it in the water. He throw it in the water. Make a beverage out of that, and all them drink, bro. Don't want to even try it. What happened to all the people who wanted to kill him? Ain't nobody saying, I'm drinking that. They drink that. They drink that, bro. That's what I see him, dog. You know what I mean? <laughs> What's this just like, y'all? Hey, y'all drinking that. Y'all ain't messing with I me. I'm playing with y'all. I'm not playing with y'all. 
Moses, uh, so I'm picking up in verse 25. Moses saw that the people were running wild and that Aaron had let them get out of control. So, so, and so became a laughing stock to the enemies. So we stood at the entrance of the camp and said, whoever's for the Lord, come to me. Hmm. All the Levites rallied to him. Then he said to them, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, each man, oh, I remember this spot. Yeah. Each man strap a sword to his side. Go back and forth through the camp hmm. from one end to the other, killing his brother and friend and neighbor. Hmm. The Levites did as Moses commanded. And that day about 3,000 of the people died. Hmm. Then Moses said, you have been set apart to the Lord today. You were once against your own sons and brothers and he has blessed you this day. The next day, Moses said to the people, you have committed a great sin, but now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. So Moses went back to the Lord and said, oh, what a great sin these people have committed. They have made themselves gods of gold, but now please forgive their sin. But if not, do, then blot me out of the book you have written. That's powerful, but we almost then so I just could finish this and we could come, talk, come back and talk about this. So in verse 33, the Lord said to Moses, Whoever has sinned against me, I will blot out of my book. Now go, lead the people to the place I have spoke of, and my angel will go out before you. However, when the time comes for me to punish, I will punish them for their sin. And the Lord struck the people with a plague because of what they did <laughs> with the calf Aaron had made. Mm -hmm. So, we can't skip over that. All oh, y'all go to the left, go to the right. No, no, okay. no. As I said, I said, we come running it back up. You know, in PE, right? Mm -hmm. And you pick two captains, right? Mm -hmm. And if you was team Earl or Earl, you pick, I pick, you pick, I pick, and then we have our two teams. That's essentially what happened. Everybody who know this was wrong and who want to follow God, stand on this side. Everybody who into idols, stand on the next side. Stand on the next side. So they divided now. We see about 3,000 people. It's like, man, I love idols and I wanted to worship idols. I'll do it again if I have to. This is me just putting words in their mouth. But Moses was like, all right, this is what the Lord commanded us now. All You see all these people over here? We got to take the sword and cut them out of our, this like a, like a, like a cancerous cell or something. Mm -hmm. We got to cut this out of the body of God. Right now, out of the Hebrew clan. And no matter if it's your brother, your neighbor, your cousin, you got to kill, we, we, you got to kill them. And that ain't no jokey thing, but imagine, because, you know, even if you have a family of all people who are like pious and just devoted to God, it might still be that one person who is not on the same accord as y'all. Think about Adam, Eve, Abel, and Cain. Cain was the only one who was the oddball. But imagine God saying, all right, you got to kill them. Because what they did was a, 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 an offense punishable by death For sure You understand what I'm saying? That's what they do And we ain't But we making an example out of them Now granted All us Partake in party So mm -hmm. all us guilty And our time coming Our punishment coming But mm -hmm. right now The people Who standing firm on this right now And they'll do it again if they have to We gotta get them out We gotta get them out of here mm -hmm. Because literally This wouldn't stop happening you know, because if, bro, bro, these people, they, they mindset ain't gonna change. They gonna always want to worship that island. They gonna always push that agenda. And if you get a slap on the wrist, what could stop them from doing, doing it again? Because the last thing they say, the worst that happened, this is we to drink some golden calf. So hmm, I ain't, I ain't drink gold in a couple of months. I could, I could do some gold again. I could do it. It wasn't, it wasn't horrible. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't a horrible experience. It was, it was kind of glistening. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, it was a refreshing beverage, <laughs> but yeah, bro. So they just had to kill their family. That's crazy to me. I remember mm -hmm. the first time we read this, bro. Mm -hmm. that it was, was like, remember? <laughs> yeah, when we when we we be going around the room and ask, "Would you kill me if God yeah. if God tell you to do it?" We had a friend here, and I did not make the list. You make the list, bro. I have gotten <laughs> slain. She didn't think about it though. That's yeah. the thing. She's like, "Yeah, no, yeah, bro, God you're tell dead. me do it." Oh yeah, but you gone, bro. You dead, and you can't even get mad at that because this for God now. Yeah, you understand what they say? I was like, "Wow." <laughs> It was nothing personal, bro. It's strictly religious. No, that was personal for me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's crazy. Like it's super crazy. <clears throat> and <laughs> same same time the next day, Moses still going up and and say, maybe I could, maybe I could reason on behalf of y'all. Behalf of y'all, because I see how great this sin was. Because he been in, on top of the mountain, Moses didn't really understand what was happening. Moses, like, my God, no, you can't destroy them. Moses came down, and was like, bro. 
this bigger than I thought it yeah, was. I thought exactly. it was going to be a little small, little cop. No, y'all was, y'all was really worshiping this cop mm-hmm. and really offering sacrifice and all that. God, Moses was like, nah, that's too big. That's a great sin y'all commit. This ain't no little small sin. This is a great sin y'all commit against God. And this was around the time, and this was coming after when in the commandments it say, don't take the name of God in vain. Don't have no other gods before me. Don't worship idols. Some of the first commandments, bro. Moses say, y'all, Aaron, let y'all run wild and we become a laughing stock mm-hmm. to the other nations. That's taking the Lord in vain, bro. If you put God in a, in a position for people to laugh at you, like sincerely, not because like, because some people would laugh at righteousness or whatever. Some people laugh at Elijah when he was going up. You the know? Right. They wasn't, they wasn't mm-hmm. justified or not. And them bears come and eat them. Yeah. The she bears the come she bears. And, and deal with them. You, you know what I mean? But, you 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 become so hypocritical and you all become so disorganized that it, it was laughable. And that's also taking the name of the Lord in vain. So you 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 kind of desecrated the holy name of this people that y'all already the, the holy name that y'all already had. And so now people can look at them and be like, but they ain't holy, bro. They only are holy a couple of days, and then a couple of days they run around like a chicken with their head cut off. They doing what we doing. You you minding them? That's the same, bro. That's the same idols we have. We have Egypt had a golden calf. I'm pretty sure. Bro, and one of the things, bro, and mm-hmm. one of the things, because oh, yeah, yeah, you remember yeah, the yeah, cattle, yeah. it was it was something against the cattle. Oh yeah, check out a breath of fresh air, fresh air fox. Exactly. So they had, bro, they had idols for cattle, bro. Mm-hmm. And that's essentially what y'all just run that back. Y'all didn't even make nothing new. You see, they say God said ain't nothing new. Because God already say, don't make idols, period. <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't even make an idol in my likeness. And so, so. This 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 chapter right here is kind of helping us to understand the mindset or just the culture within the Hebrew people. How no matter what, as soon as things, as soon as in the face of adversity, or as soon as they lack supervision, they default back to their old ways and they backslide mm-hmm. and they become emboldened in the way they do that. But I always feel like the Hebrews are a microcosm of the believers today. Excuse me. It's easy for us to sit here and to always criticize them. But to me, it's like trying to call out the speck in someone's eye and ignoring the logs in our own eye. These people, of course, they were in the presence of God. To me, that makes it even more unfathomable how that happened. But I can think about times in my life when God has spared me when God has saved me from something and I still go and go against his law. I remember one time I was on a trip. Um, I, I came to the United States with a, with a group and I had to get sponsors in order to come. And I, was, and I didn't have an, I didn't, I wasn't able to do it in enough time. And so I didn't get enough sponsors to actually come. I, I, I made the trip, but a lot of my expenses weren't paid for like, when people go shop and I did, I wasn't able to go shop and I wasn't able to partake in X, Y, Z. And so I was really just hoarding the little bit of money I had. And I was praying, God, provide for me, provide for me, provide for me. And he did provide for me to go on the trip. But while I get on the trip, me and a couple of friends start shoplifting. I was like, everybody getting away with this. Mm-hmm. I could do it too. And we start shoplifting. And it was kind of bold, like the way it was happening. You understand what I'm saying? Mercy. None of us got caught. But on the last night, while I, 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 had, I had saved this, I probably only had like $150 for the whole trip. Mm-hmm. I had saved this $150 piece at Walmart. We was just getting a bunch of stuff like clothes, socks, da 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 da. And I was spending the whole $150 that I had. It was this guy who came to, to the register. It was a trip with the choir. Mm-hmm. And he came and he's like, hey man, y- y'all, just, y'all just sang. Man, y'all was such a blessing. I want to bless somebody. My boy in front of me had just finished paying. He had just paid. Mm-hmm. Now it's my turn. And he waited and let me ring up everything. And he paid for all my stuff. Mm. And I was just, but I felt so bad. Because I was like, I was praying. And I, I had faith that God was going to deliver me. But what I ended up doing, I ended up shoplifting. Because I wanted to take matters into my own hand. And at that time, I did not receive any consequences. Like I probably might have, God probably might have. Give me the consequences later on. I don't know. Because I've experienced people stealing from me. 
Mm-hmm. You understand? But that time that really humbled me. That made me feel so bad because I was like, I was serving God, bro. This trip was to serve God. Mm-hmm. I coming over here and just doing the wrong thing. You understand? And, and bro, I, I ain't no thief, bro. I don't. I, I actually don't like people stealing, bro. Like uh-huh. at all, bro. I don't. I don't like the feeling of being stolen. I don't like when people come around me talking about stuff that they stealing. Even if it's like you stealing from a corporation who ain't gonna miss the money. Mm-hmm. Everything. I don't. I don't support that. I don't want stuff with the in mind because I feel like that always come at a price. Mm-hmm. But that just go to show how you could be doing stuff for God. You could be in the presence of God. This mom was touched by the Holy Spirit to do it. The Holy Spirit sent him to do that. Mm-hmm. He was in the stance while we were singing. He was touched. He felt how he felt the Holy Spirit moving through us. And so, just so happened to come to Walmart right afterwards. Right, as well. bro, just so happened to come to the same place where we was. You understand what I said? And he 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 listened to the instructions of God, but I didn't. I am no different than the Hebrews. And I like to be transparent. And it's probably other situations I can use to even better bring this point home. But that's the way I look at the Hebrews. These people was God's people. They talked to God. You understand what I'm saying? Not directly, but through Moses. They saw God. Not directly, but through miracles. Over and over and over. And they still keep reverting back to their ways. But we could see how literally that did not leave them unaffected from consequences. So today, I just want to say to be mindful. You are not covered by the ministry that you do. Just because you are a minister or just because you serve God and read God, that don't mean that you exempt from sinning or you exempt from the consequences that come with sin. So it's, it's, it's important to actually be cognizant of this and to make it even stronger or take the even stronger initiative to try to offset these type of situations. Because I, I also believe that like, especially when you're doing things for God or when you're in the presence of God, that's when temptations will come the most because... Think about it. If, if the devil could could get God's people to sin, like that would be that would be even more powerful than him getting someone else who doesn't even worry about God to sin. Because we have the name of God, and if we could be shown that we taking God's name in vain, the people who look at us as the representation of God could be confused and decide not to want to not to want to follow us in any type of way. But ultimately, <clears throat> what I want to say is on this journey, it's definitely not an easy journey. And the further we and the further and the closer we get to God, the more temptations may surround us. But it's important for us to stay strong and to stay disciplined and to stay on the course of God in order for us not to lose ourselves, lose our relationship with God, and also not to be a stumbling block to others. others. It seems like the Israelites just can't get it right. One day they're pledging to keep the Ten Commandments, another day, they're worshipping a golden calf at the foot of the mountain. Such defiance infuriated God and made him want to destroy the Israelites. But it also led to Moses destroying the stone tablets where the Ten Commandments were written. Moses returned to God for some new stone tablets. But during this visit, let's just say God showed a side of him that he doesn't usually show. But we'll talk more about that as we conclude the book of Exodus on the next episode. Of a breath of fresh air. Tonight's episode included voice acting by Dominic McFall, Lindell Sejis, Jaden Roberts, as well as your host, Earl Roberts, and the Cars Gay. Remember to go ahead and research on your own in order to get a more firm understanding of tonight's episode. And if you enjoyed it, make sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. You can follow us on social media at a breath of fresh air pod on Instagram and B O F A P O D on Twitter. Thanks, everyone.